1-9, Patterns, Equations, and Graphs. So our objective in this lesson is to use tables, equations, and graphs to describe relationships. Our essential understanding is that sometimes the value of one quantity can be found if you know the value of another. You can represent the relationships between quantities, quantities in different ways, including tables, equations, and graphs. Okay, so this is going to be a pretty short section, um, and basically we're just going to talk real quick about how to use three different ways to represent data, tables, equations, and graphs. Okay, so we can use an equation with two variables to represent the relationship between two varying quantities. A solution of an of an equation with two variables x and y is any ordered pair x and y that makes the equation true. For instance, this is an equation with two variables. It's got an x and it's got a y. Okay. And we can, of course, uh, graph that and uh, we, we're going to do a lot of stuff with uh, lines and other equations that have two variables. Um, what we need to realize is that my answer is going to have an input and an output uh, the x and the y coordinate. So is 3 comma 10 a solution to the equation y is equal to 4x? Well very simply we have our equation we have a y we have an x and if I multiply those two together we have that 10 is equal to 12 which is not true. So the answer here is no, that 3 comma 10 is not a solution of the equation. Okay. Let's do some of our got it problems. Same equation is, are these points solutions to the equation y is equal to 4x? So we'll start with, hmm, we'll start with 20 is equal to 4 times 5, which is true. Then negative 20 is equal to 4 times negative 5, which is also true. Uh, be careful with this one right here because my y coordinate is negative 5. So that's negative 5 is equal to 4 times negative 20, which is not true. And 6 is equal to 4 times 1.5, which you might not know off the top of your head, but... I believe it is true, yes. That is true for that coordinate. Okay. We can represent the same relationship between two variables in several different ways. Okay. So for this one, we are going to take, for this problem, we're going to use a table, an equation, and a graph to talk about this relationship. Both Carrie and her sister Kim were born on October 25th, but Kim was born two years before Carrie. How can you represent the relationship between Carrie's age and Kim's age in different ways? Okay. So let's start with a table. Okay. So let's go Carrie, and let's go with Kim. And your table can go left to right like I'm going to do, or we can go up and down and make two columns. Okay, but we'll do some rows here. So Carrie's age, let's say she's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And we can keep going, of course. But when Carrie is 1, okay, Kim was born two years before her. So when Carrie's having her first birthday, Kim is turning 3. When Carrie is 2, Kim is 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. And of course, we can take this table and keep going and going and going. And we can make it look a little bit nicer. All right, let's put those up. We can make a box around them. We can do whatever we want. We'll put a nice title on the top. Uh, however, we want to uh, represent this data. Okay. Let's try an equation. So here, we're saying that let x equal carry. Whoops. Okay. And 
let y equal to Kim. And when we want to go from Carrie to Kim, if we look at my table on each data point, I'm starting at five, going to seven, starting at six, going to eight. So what am I doing? Well, to get Kim's age, I'm taking Carrie's age and adding two. Okay, and there's my equation. This can all be also be represented with a graph, with a linear function. Okay, so when Carrie was one, Kim was three. So I can put a I can put a dot right there. That dot. I put a dot right there. Okay. When Carrie was born, Kim was turning two. When Carrie was two, Kim was turning four. Carrie was three, five, and we can see what's happening with all my ages right here. And this graph is going to give me a nice, perfectly straight line. Okay. Let's look at, I got a problem. Okay. Will run six laps before Megan joins him at the track. They, then they run together at the same pace. How can you represent the relationship between the number of laps Will runs and the number of laps Megan runs in these same different ways? Okay. So we're going to get Megan. And we're going to get Will. Okay. And uh, when Megan finishes her first lap, Will has already run six before it, so now he's just finishing lap number seven. When Megan does two, Will is eight, three, nine, four, ten, five, eleven, and so on and so on and so on. Okay. And to get from one point to the other point, right, if Megan is X and Will is Y, to get the number of laps that Will is running, we take X plus six. And then, of course, I could let's use the same. I didn't make a new graph. So let's use the same graph from up here. Okay. Instead of starting at 2, like for Carrie and Kim's ages, we're now going to start at 6. And I'm going to get the same sort of relationship uh, that I had before. It's just my line is now going to start in a different spot. Okay. And describe how the graph from problem two above would change if the difference in the ages were from five years instead of two years. Well, the graph would start at a different spot. So instead of uh, Carrie being born when Kim was two, Carrie would be born when Kim was five. So it, the graph would start at zero five instead of zero two. Okay. The last thing we're going to talk about is inductive reasoning. This is the process of reaching a conclusion based on observed patterns. We can use this technique to predict values. For instance, the table shows the relationships between the number of blue tiles and the total number of tiles in each figure. So, for instance, the first figure, that one right there, has one blue tile and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and nine tiles total, which we get were one and nine. Extend the pattern. What is the total number of tiles in a figure with eight blue tiles? Well, we have to figure out the pattern and see what's going on here. So for every for every increase in in a in a figure, right? The number of blue tiles for every increase in a blue figure, this one goes up by nine. Okay. So if we want to try to make an equation for that, well, what's happening? Well, we're taking some number, right? We're taking two, or we're taking one, and we're we're getting nine, we're taking two, we're getting 18, we're getting three, we're getting 27. You can see the pattern is going to be that y is equal to nine times my input, my x, right? Number of tiles is y, 
the number of blue tiles is X. So with this in mind, instead of drawing out all these figures and counting them all up, because the numbers are going to get pretty big here, right? We can just say that Y is going to equal to 9 times 8, which is going to be 72. Uh, we could also try to have to graph this relationship and then extend the graph to see what's going on uh, further down. Okay. Let's look at this again. Using the tile figure from problem three, make a table showing the number of orange tiles and the total number of tiles in each figure. Okay, so if we make a nice table uh, with my orange tiles, so let's go back up here, let's look at this. There's one, two, three, four orange tiles in each figure, okay? So for this one, when, so this is going to be orange total, okay? So my orange tiles is going to be four in the first one with nine total. Then we're going to get another, another four with 18 total. Then another four, that's 12 with 27 total. And finally, 16 with 36 total. And how many tiles would be in a figure with 24 tiles? Well, I could just keep this relationship going, right? 20 and 24. Right? And then this would be um, uh, 45 and 54. Okay. So there's going to be 54 tiles in my one with uh, 24 orange tiles. Not really a big trick to this. It's just discovering the pattern, seeing how when the orange tiles increase, how many of the red, of the total ones are going up, and trying to compare and contrast and see what is going on. Okay. So, uh, probably the most important here, right, is recognizing whether a point is a solution to an equation. So just make sure that you're plugging in the right letters, Y and X, um, and making some sort of relationship for these word problems right here. Uh, vocabulary, describe the difference between inductive reasoning and deductive reasoning. Uh, inductive reasoning, conclusions can be reached by observing patterns. With deductive reasoning, conclusions are given by reasoning logically from given facts. Okay, so in inductive, you're looking at the pattern, you're seeing what's going on, and you're making an inference, right? You're inducing what's going to happen next. And for deductive reasoning, we're using facts. How is writing an equation to represent a situation involving two variables similar to writing an equation to represent a system, a situation including only one variable? Um, both contain variables, both contain unknown values. It's just with one variable, right? We are just looking for one quantity in an equation for two variables. We're looking for um, lots. And finally, reasoning, which of these? Our solutions to this equation, y is equal to x plus 2. Well, 3 plus 2 is 5, 4 plus 2 is 6, 5 plus 7, or 5 plus 2 is 7, and 6 plus 2 is 8. So they are all solutions of the equation. Okay. So this was a quick section. Uh, it happens to be the last section in Chapter 1. Um, so we'll finish up Chapter 1 and move on to Chapter 2.